Hi guys, welcome back. This is Sam for SAP Careers and Job Seekers Group. Today we are going to talk about Hypercare and SLA. So Hypercare, what is Hypercare and what is SLA? Hypercare is something that is done post go live and it's also known as post go live support and SLA stands for support level agreement. So let's talk about each one of them separately. I'll start with uh, Hypercare first. So hypercare, when you move your configuration from development to test or QA and QA to production, you copy the configuration data and that copied files are known as transports. You will release your transports and you will move those transports from QA to production. And that process is known as a cutover process. So the process goes through certain steps or what we know known as cutover log which includes step-by-step -step process depending on whether you're an on-premises customer or you're a cloud-based uh, HANA customer or HANA cloud customer. So both of them will be different because in the cloud, you will need SAP assistance in terms of readiness of the system. Uh, you will have to uh, do a little coordination with SAP, but if you are on-premises, you are fully in control. So you will check the patches, the support uh, level agreements, you will also check the database. Uh, you will have to make sure all the versions of database applications, the semantic or the ABAP data dictionary layers and all effects that that SAP has, which is called SAP nodes or side effects have been implemented both in terms of authorization objects or data dictionary objects, which is known as SPOW or SPDD, which is uh, service, pa service pack uh, data dictionary and service pack authorization objects, right? SPOW and SPDD. So when you move, you check the effects of these both for authorization and data dictionary objects. You also make sure all your patches, all your applications are at a certain level, which is in synchronization. The, the QA is at the same level as the production so that there is no difference in the two environments and you want to kind of ensure that both the cloud environment and the on-premises environment really synchronize with each other. Because otherwise, if you do not synchronize this, then when you move your transports from QA to production, you will have challenges or issues. And those will be also addressed during the hypercare. So once you move your transports, uh, you will cut over from QA to production. And what will start is called the stabilization phase or the hypercare or the post-go live phase. And in the post go live phase, you will look at data migration, stabilization of authorization objects, roles and profiles authorization, latency, which is speed of the system, user uh, uh, experience in terms of getting the user experience better acquainted, give them help cards, give them immediate support. So the project team literally stays for those periods, which is typically 15 days for a smaller project, and it can go up to 90 days if you are a global rollout or a large complex organization with large projects. So what will happen is after 90 days, either the project is, uh, team is outsourced the entire managed services agreement, which is known as SLA, which is support level agreement. So you take the entire support of application management systems or managed services from the client or it moves on to operational team. So if they have in-house consultants, which is they have uh, the functional consultants, the technical consultant, the system admin and security and network administrative consultants, then they will take over that operational support. You still might be required because if there's a functional issue, uh, they might still approach you. But in most cases, if the co company is large enough and they have in-house staff, then they look after that themselves. In a lot of cases, if you want to outsource that, then you can outsource it to organization like ours, which is SAPSOL Technologies. We are SAP service partner, and we do look after turnkey projects and outsource projects as well. So that's the hypercare piece of it, which lasts from 15 days to 90 days, after which the operational support or the managed services contract kicks in. And as far as SLA goes, SLA stands for uh, uh, Service Lifecycle Agreement or Support Level Agreement or Support and Service Level Agreements. And Service Level Agreement, you will define the levels of support. So, so first level is known as critical, which is basically you want to resolve the issue in two to four hours. In some cases, it could be as fast as 30 minutes to one hour and these uh, issue needs to be resolved right, right away. The second would be a high priority ticket 
and then high priority ticket would be resolved within four to eight hours or four hours, depending on the company's policy and company's processes. They define what is critical, what is high priority, what is the medium priority, which could be as long as 48 hours and low priority, which could be as long as four to five days, right? The SLAs or service level agreement really depends on company to company and they will define what are the criteria for resolving these tickets. Now there are three kinds of support tickets or support requests you can get. One is incidents. What is the incident? Incident is a break fix, something that's working and it stops working. If a user was supposed to have access and he's not getting access, then it's an authorization ticket. If he's getting an error or a dump like ST22, then you will go and check. If it's authorization in SUIM, you will go and check uh, the authorization and then you will enable that in the transaction PFCG, which is profile generator and SU, SU01, which is create those roles and profiles and assign them the right authorization. If it's a BAP request, then obviously you check the ST22 and you go out and look at, you know, the, the, the SE38 or SE80, those objects, and then you uh, go out and check the breakpoints and resolve those ABAP issues that you might be having. And that would be an incident for a BAP. If it's a functional incident, and let's say you're getting a master data error or you're getting a transactional or integration error, then the functional guy will go and resolve that. So those would be incidences. The second is a service request. Service request would be, hey, uh, I think I should have additional transaction or additional authorization, right? Which is not a break fix, but it's an add-on request. And that can be longer than an incidence, right? It could be also, hey, I need to modify my order, sales order type or a purchase order type, or I want to modify my financial reports. And that would be a smaller, uh, area of change, but will go as a service request because it is the add on, right? A change man, a change request is the third one and change request is a larger uh, animal and that looks after changing the process or adding on a process which was not in scope. So if you have an order type, let's say a cash order, cash sales order, and you want to do a drop ship or a third party order, or you want to do a consignment order, then adding a consignment order or a drop ship order would be a change request. Similarly, if you are doing an OEM outsourcing of procurement, then that would be a change request because normal procurement purchase orders do not look after that. So those change requests is the third level of ticket, uh, third type of ticket you can get. So you can get incidences, you can get service requests, and you can get change requests, right? So these all three need to be triaged out. So for this, we have support level agreement. and the support level agreement, we have four levels, as I said, first one is critical. So you want to resolve this in uh, two hours, uh, normally, depending on the organization, two to four hours. If it is high priority, you would do it in four to eight hours. If it's medium priority, it could go up to 48 hours. And if it's low priority, it could take three to five days. So the, the first level of support is provided by the business process owners, or we call them SME subject matter experts. They they are the ones who have propagated the business requirement document. And they will go out and tell their teams, guys, this is the new method of doing it. We only have two order types, which is cash order, and we have a standard order type, right? We do not have other order types. We are doing away with that. So if they come up that this is not working or that is not working, uh, those business primes or subject matter experts or process owners are the one they will approach. And that'll be the level one agreement, uh, uh, one, level one support, which is, the business owners will give that level of support because they are the ones who have asked for those implementation or automation of those processes and they are best equipped to guide and they also command the authority to explain to the end users. So that's the first one. The second level uh, of support would be a functional team. So you, you will actually uh, take the ticket and you will send it to the help desk, right? And that help desk will possibly have one person who's not even functional. He's a techno functional guy and he will be able to resolve most of those issues, which are minor issues like login issues, authorization issues, uh, smaller errors or system has a windows error or a network error. So those level of uh, support is called a help desk and the help desk is the second level of support and help desk. 
takes care of issues which are not taken care of by the business owners or the process owners, right? So they will uh, be looked after by help desk. That's the second level of support. Once help desk determines that this cannot be addressed by them and it needs a change by the functional team, then they will actually have a triage out. The triage will be either to a functional team or to a technical team. The functional team could be financials, material management, sales and distribution, production planning, human resource, project systems. So those would be the functional side. If it's technical side, it would be uh, developers or customization people like Abapers or Webdin Pro people or HANA Studio people, which are developing in UI5 or Fury apps, or it could be authorization objects, which is done by the security consultant. And lastly, it could be the system admin. If the system is slow or it has a security certificate issue like SSL issue or it has latency, then the security cons uh, system admin and the security consultant will work together. So SSL will be looked after uh, you know, by the security guy and single sign-on will be looked after by the security guys. The authorization role, the profiles will be looked after by security guys. And then the slowness or the latency has been to be looked after by the admin team. And they have to ensure that all the patches, all the side effects, all the notes, all, all of those are implemented and the system works seamlessly. And this is a regular maintenance job uh, that the technical team has to undertake both from a security aspect and from a system admin aspect. The functional team does not really make those changes. They just support both organization structure, the master data, the in integration and the transactional data aspect of it. And the, the development team will support all the custom objects because what happens is whenever you upgrade, all the custom objects are the ones you have to rework on because the standard uh, objects have changed. So this will, all the customized transactions will be reworked on. So that would be the third level of support. The fourth level of support is a, a level of support where you will interact with not just the SAP folks, not just with the users, but you might have business partners, you might have networking guy, you might have database uh, a company, you might have Dell servers, so you might have to call up Dell, you are using a data center of SAP, you will have to communicate with the data center of SAP, you have business partners, customer vendors, you have uh, banking interfaces to be worked on, you might have union, um, uh, you know, uh, disbursements to be done, you might have interface with the government departments, all of those need to be worked in coordination with both hardware, software and integration team or interface team aspects. And you will bring all those parties together on the, on the table and the level support team will look after those complex areas which are not just SAP, but their interdependencies of other applications and other integration areas, both internal to the company and external to the company, which includes business partners. So that's the level four support that, that you will do. So guys, uh, in a SLA, you will define all of this and then you'll also define the quality control parameter. The quality control parameter looks after, hey, uh, the quality metrics is now created because when you use tools like Jira or a service now or Calm, which is cloud asset lifecycle management tool of SAP, or you might use another tool, uh, you know, like Zendesk or any other tool, it doesn't really matter. So all of them will have, uh, you know, an area where the user will load, the, the business prime will load the ticket, it will have the target uh, date when the ticket is raised or the target date when it needs to be resolved and the actual date when it's, it is resolved. And through a workflow, it will be triaged out to the appropriate team members so that they, they resolve it under those parameters of very critical, high, medium, and low. So this is very critical. And every client needs this uh, post-go-live or a hyper-care, and it also needs a service level agreement or what we call as managed services, in some cases known as AMS, application management and support. <coughs> so uh, AMS or managed services or SLAs are part, part and parcel of the same. The QC parameters or the metrics you create will define how many have been severe, how many have been uh, high, how many have been medium, how many have been low. It will also define uh, the, the kind of tickets you have raised, whether these incidents have been security incidents, whether they have been service requests or they have been change requests. So it kind of gives you a analytic view of the entire support and most of the tools like Jira or ServiceNow has this uh, built into it. Even Calm of SAP has built into it. There are tools from IBM HP, which can also be used. 
and there are tons and tons of other tools and uh, boutique companies which provide you support ticket ticketing tools we use jira we are just comfortable with that in terms of workflows that it generates in terms of escalation process it does so you do have to escalate if it's not let, met and this uh, metrics or QC or quality control they reviewed by the client and the project team members or the managed services contract company such as Sapsol Technology which is our company on a monthly quarterly uh, and uh, you know annual basis and the support agreements are renewed normally I would say at least annually or in some cases it could be as long as five years large companies would outsource the entire maintenance or entire ams or entire maintenance services to organizations such as us we, we do set up uh, maintenance teams both in us canada in africa in asia where we have offices so do reach out to us if you think and we do partner so if you have an opportunity we partner with you to work with the client and everybody benefits in and the, the, the financial and the business model is very flexible and we work with you guys to kind of ensure that everybody benefits out of it. So guys, there you go. This is about Hypercare and SLA. If you do like the content of this uh, video, please do like and subscribe this channel. We will talk to you again. Uh, once you subscribe, we'll intimate you whenever we load the videos and hopefully this will help you in your journey of building a successful career. And this is Sam signing off for SAP Careers and Job Seekers Group. Thank you guys.